to Jesus I surrender all to Thee I freely give and I will ever love and trust in Him His presence Today, we celebrate Pentecost Sunday, and I subtitle that, The Perfect Plan Continues.
And today we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. And I subtitle that, The Perfect Plan Continues. Now you have to understand in your mind that God is a God of infinite details. He's got it all figured out from the book of beginnings to the book of Revelation. He knew exactly where he was going with this canon. It's written for your good. It's written so that you understand no matter what you're going through, you are not a robot that he's mechanically pushing around on this earth. You have free will and a choice. He just desires that you would make the right choice. That's the whole thing, making the right choice. Let me give you a little bit of the history of Pentecost Sunday. First of all, it is also called the Feast of Weeks, also known as Harvest, Shabbat, the Day of First Fruits, or Pentecost, was a festival of joy and thanksgiving, celebrating the completion of the harvest season. It was the second major feast in which all able-bodied Jewish males were required to attend, the other two being Passover and the Feast of Tabernacles. Essentially, a harvest celebration. The term weeks describes the time period from the grain harvest to the barley harvest and finally to the wheat harvest. Now that might not mean an awful lot to you. The thing you want to remember is seven weeks, say seven weeks, seven and weeks. One, day one day equals 50 days. Pente. Thank you very much. I feel like you, are you all sleeping over here? Let me hear you say pente. 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 50. Okay. 50. Seven weeks. And what you're going to remember, pente. Not just penne, the pasta. Pente. 50. You got it? Okay. It's called the Feast of Weeks because God specifically told the sons of Jacob that they were to count seven sevens of weeks, seven the complete weeks, from first fruits, and then on the morrow, which added the day, the extra day, it was to be observed seven sevens of weeks of 49 days, add one, and it makes it 50. The fourth feast was to occur precisely 50 days after first fruits. In this case, first fruits was resurrection, when Jesus Christ gave himself and he was raised from the dead. Therefore, the feast was given the name Pentecost, which means 50. Do you all understand that? If I were to give you a quiz, you think you got that so far? Okay, on this occasion, the children of Israel will not just simply bring first fruits of the wheat to the temple as they brought the first of the barley, but rather two loaves of bread. These two loaves were specifically commanded to be made with the fine flour from the harvest baked with leaven, and they were to use it as a wave offering for the people. You see how... God was such a detailed God. Aren't you glad that you're under grace today? Don't you, aren't, aren't you glad you don't have to do all these little itsy-bitsy sacrifices that God required before Jesus Christ? Yeah. He, requ he was no softy. He required it. He demanded it. And God forbid you didn't do it. Okay, so they had to do it properly. What does it mean? The Feast of Weeks is a symbolic festival which pointed to the coming of the Holy Spirit and the birthday of the church. The Son of God arose from the grave on first fruits. He then spent 40 days with his disciples in post-resurrection ministry. And after those 40 days, he informed them what was going to happen. He told his disciples that they would not be left abandoned and comfortless, that he would send them his Holy Spirit come alongside of him. The disciples were commanded to tarry at Jerusalem until he came. And they knew exactly how long they would have to wait coming of the Holy Spirit would occur on the next Jewish holiday, a festive time when Jews from different countries would be in Jerusalem to celebrate the completion of the harvest season. The annual feast was none other than Shabbat, the Feast of Weeks. The disciples waited as they were commanded. Then wait was not long, just 10 days after his ascension, and then it happened. Say, then it happened. The Spirit of God descended on those first century believers. Amazing. What a plan. It was completed. 
I want you to turn with me, if you will, to Matthew 27. This was the perfect plan of God for us. Matthew 27, starting with verse 33. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, that is to say, the place of the skull, they gave him sour wine mingled with gall to drink. But when he had tasted it, he would not drink. Then they crucified him and divided his garments, cast in lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. Sitting down, they kept watch over him there, and they put over his head the accusation written against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Somebody say crucifixion. Crucifixion. Number one. Number two, Matthew 28. Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And, and behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from the heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him, and, and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. Someone say resurrection. In this section, say resurrection. In this section, say resurrection. resurrection. Over here, say resurrection. resurrection. So now we have crucifixion. We have resurrection. And there were instructions given for the best thing that was about to happen. And that's in Acts 1, starting with verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. <laughs> Therefore, when they came together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? They still didn't get it. Still didn't get it. And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. And don't go write in a book about it either. Excuse me. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Come on. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Instructions. Wait. Has God been speaking to you about waiting? Yes. How many like to wait? How many don't like to wait? How many try to pick the shortest line in Publix? And you always winds up there changing the tape in the register. You think God's trying to tell you something? Wait. The hardest thing to do. 120 people in one place told nothing more than wait. Okay, Acts 2, 1 to 4, please. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord, hmm. with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they uh -huh. were sitting. Then there appeared unto them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Do you have any idea what they must have felt like? You have to understand, these people witnessed the violent murder of a man, cold-bloodedly bludgeoned, murdered for something he was being accused of that he really did not do. Are you hearing me? In their mindset, have you ever seen anything on TV or catch a picture in the media and it's it's ugly and you have to pray to erase it from your mind 
That's why people who slow down and look at accidents, you know, they're nuts because they want to see blood. See, men are nuts. Women are nuts that want to see blood. What are you slowing down to look at the accident? Keep the speed up so you don't cause a, a, an accident yourself and keep going. But man is curious. Oh, my goodness. Did you see his eye was on the... His eye was rolling out of his head. Oh, my goodness, he was almost decapitated. See, because your mind takes a picture. Now, these people, this 120, they had a picture of a nightmare that just happened 50 days prior. Do you understand that? And they didn't know what they were waiting for. He just said, go and wait, and the Holy Spirit will come upon you. What? What, Holy Spirit? They were ignorant concerning these things. Never had them before. Can you imagine the silence that there must have been in that upper room? You have to understand in the 40 days before that, 10 days prior, they waited for the 10 days, but 40 days, he was appearing anywhere. He was going through walls and appearing in rooms and showing his, his, his nail prints and, and talking to the disciples. And, and, and what happened? They sat there and said, I wonder if he's going to appear himself. Are we here by ourselves? What do we do? There was an eerie silence. I really believe that. I don't believe anybody was speaking, Pastor. I don't believe anybody was looking at each other. What would you do if you were sitting in that room and you were told to wait for a supernatural event? How would you be acting? I don't think Tommy's friend Ethel would be saying anything. <laughs> What would she be saying? Didn't know what to expect. Waiting in that place. That plan, that place, that occurrence didn't just happen within those 50 days. We go back to the book of beginnings in Genesis 1, starting from the beginning, Genesis 1, 1, it tells us, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, ah. and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God hovered over the face of the waters. Hovered. My New King James says, moved upon the face of the earth. Moved. Now, the correct uh, translation of that word in the Hebrew is brood. Somebody say brood. Now, not brood like beer is brood. Coffee's brood. No, brood, B-R-O-O-D. Such as what a mother hen does over her chicks. She broods over them. And she covers them. And she gives them the warmth, safety on it till it's time for them to hatch. And I'm here to tell somebody this morning that the Holy Ghost is brooding over you, your situation, your family, your lifestyle, your future, and you are about to hatch. Who is a candidate? How many know that the Holy Spirit of God is so ready to do a new thing, but there's a brooding process? They were waiting in the upper room. In the book of beginnings, everything was void and without shape and form. And we see that the Holy Spirit was brooding, was brooding, was lingering, was allowing the earth to be formed in its proper fashion. Somebody say brooding. The Holy Spirit is hovering. The Holy Spirit, right here in this Southwest corridor, I'm telling you something, something is about to hatch in this area because we believe in a God who says, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn, you got to participate in this. You've got to participate. This Southwest region, God is going to bring the greatest revival ever. Oh, I know you've been hearing it for a while, but the opposition has been great. This Mother Earth is tired. 
You don't have to go very far. Just turn your computer on and see these ridiculous. Think about in the last three or four years what we've seen between tsunamis and tornadoes and fires out of control in Arizona and fires out of control. The earth is tired. And the Holy Spirit of God is hovering to have this final act of time complete. Is somebody hearing me? He's a God of perfect planning. He's a God of perfect planning. That crucifixion, that resurrection, and Pentecost was planned right back here in the book of beginnings. Brooding, hovering, planning. Oh, I keep him busy because I'm open for anything and everything he wants me to do. Oh, I might have celebrated another birthday, but my best years are ahead of me. My experience dictates I know what to do and what not to do. Do you hear me? All you need to do is get burnt a couple of times. You know not to touch that pot. That's the best teacher. And I know where we're going with this church. But right now, right now, he's hovering over. He's about to do something so supernatural to the vision of this house. He's about to unfold it even to your house, from this house to your house. He's going to bring about what his plan is for you. How many know God's got a plan for you? How many believe in the plan of God, the beginning, the center, and the end of it? He is able to complete the work that he has begun in you. Is somebody hearing me? I believe I am a woman of purpose for this hour. I am pulling out the stops to see hell emptied and heaven filled. I want to see the needs of my community met through an ordinary person with a supernatural power. I received a letter this week from a gentleman who was part of our bond program. He bought the bonds from uh, Chicago, I think. He sent a letter to the church. And we, I sent a letter to all the bondholders to let them know we are doing the very best we can to meet the need of paying the mortgage. I wanted a good, good, uh, integritous letter to be sent out. Not, not nonsense saying we're going down and we're sinking, such as some of the bond representatives are doing. So I sent a, a letter out, and this gentleman sent me this letter and said, um, I just want you to know that I'm so proud of you, Pastor Bracco, because all of our money that we invested in this, in your church, you could have walked and you could have been happy to foreclose like most institutes, but you thought more highly of we, the investors, and you held on. And I want to commend you today. You know what that letter did for me? I had a rapid review of all the anguish I've been through in two years to make sure that the bills were paid here. And Many times I did without to make sure we did. And I, I went in debt, which is not, I don't suggest anybody do that, but I would not, I refused to accept foreclosure on this building. And the Holy Spirit said, thank you for not walking. I'm not a walker. We don't walk. We don't quit. We hold on steadfastly. We persevere. Why? I'm not a martyr. But the Holy Spirit is so dominant in my life. It's been placed in me. And I will keep going on. I will keep pressing through with every bit that's in me. I have the power in me. You have the power in you. The Holy Spirit has taken total occupancy of my life. This power is going to give you the stamina to keep going on. Is somebody hearing me? I've got it. We have the pictures of those kids. Friday night, I went upstairs, and this is what's happening to King's kids. Wow. Yeah, Minister wow. Bernstein. Minister Bernstein, I walked in, and these kids, they're learning the seriousness. Look at this little boy. Look at their hands up raised. One of the moms took the pictures and said, I've never seen it. Look at this. Those eyes are closed. Look at that behind him. These kids are learning about, look at this, Brianna. How old is this kid? Five years old. In the glory of the Lord. You see the one next to her. 
in the glory of the Lord. This was prophesied by the prophet Joel. He said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. These kids are armed and dangerous. They're ready to take on their world. We've got them locked and loaded. Is somebody hearing me? We've got them locked. We're not going to negotiate. I want to tell you something. Here's where Lynn Brackle began. I didn't begin here. I began. We had 80. We started with 10 kids. We had 80 kids. And what did we teach them? We just taught them how to worship. We taught them how to lift their hands. At first, they felt foolish. But you know what? They saw their peers doing it, and they began to Hallelujah. worship the Lord. We plugged them in. You know how many of those kids right now are in the ministry? Evangelists, teachers, preachers. I just love it. Because maybe some part of the impartation I had, perhaps that did them some, some good. Bow your heads with me this morning. Jesus. Restore, refresh, and renew your my healing, Jesus, for such a time as this, arise on healing wings, sigh. 